All right. Um, so I think it's the first time we've talked to you since yes, you've yes, become yes. defensive coordinator. I like that. So, so uh, can, can you tell us about just um, that process and, you know, taking over for, for Coach Land and, and how that came about and your reaction to that? Yeah, obviously big shoes to fill from what we did last year on defense. So uh, first off, we're going to keep the package the same. Now our goal this, this spring was no different than uh, Coach Bianamis. He just tried, tried to get better in fundamentals. You know, we really want to do that. So in order to do that, we don't want to change the package. So we're out here just trying to get better. And you can see Coach Foster, he's on everybody, coaches and players, just competing, not in the drills alone, but excuse me, not in the team concept, but also in the drills. Like he's walking around and making sure we're deliberate in what we do and how that transfers over to teams. So I think so far, spring is going well. How much did last year's experience with the bowl game just kind of help ease that transition? It, well, yeah, it, it, it did because it gave me a good feel of the team itself. But obviously, I think you guys already know we lost quite a bit, yep. especially the, the, the captain of our defense was Darius, and then we lost five guys on the outside edge. So uh, in terms of replacing them, I won't. I can't. Uh, so we just got to manufacture some different ways of getting pressure differently, right? So we're just working on that. And for us, we're just calling plays to call plays so we can evaluate them. Does that give us enough to pressure a quarterback? So we're still in the evaluation process, but when we come to camp, you know, hopefully what you guys saw with the four-man rush, now we can produce with some, somewhere different. Do you, do you feel that. like that there is the talent on this team to produce pressure on the quarterback, or do you feel like you need to get some more in the in the portal? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. I think there is talent on it, but when you bring the talent from another position, uh, does the depth help us in that in that aspect? Right. I, I think our inside linebacker crew is probably the most gifted and has the most depth. You know, so those will be the rooms that I will kind of look at. Can we bring, bring somebody from that side and get them out on the edge? And can he turn into a defensive end? I'll give you an example. Fem, I mean, Femin looks like a dang defensive end, but he played Mike linebacker, so they cannot cut him off. He has access to both ways. Now, does that help us or hurt us if we put him on the end? That's something we really got to evaluate. And then, obviously, through recruiting, trying to look to see if we can find someone with similar uh, characteristics as Lockheed. Schematically, how are you changing things from what Coach Lynn is doing, and what are you bringing from your background to kind of the defense this year? Yeah, with the ex exception of um, just the words, the wording, and how I would like it to be done. You know, there's buzzwords I believe in, but the scheme itself, we do want to keep it the same. We want to make sure we can kind of just really emphasize fundamentals and how that applies to the scheme and where it applies to the scheme. So for me, uh, with the great coaching staff we'd have, right, with Brian, um, Tony, and Cody, I'm able to walk around and now specifically say, hey, this is where your drill fits into what we need and go around the room while I'm coaching the linebackers as well. When there was a transition from Coach Kelly to Coach Foster, yeah. did you kind of have to pitch yourself to Coach Foster or did he just say, no, you're, you're my guy, we're going to keep going forward? Yeah, once Coach Kelly left, I thought that he, he was the best possible answer we could have. You know, the thing I brag about Coach Foster um, is he's a walking blueprint for the success of UCLA, right? Like. For me, I, I, I went to University of Washington, so I can tell you what I've learned about UCLA and what I can sell for UCLA. Coach Foster walked it. You know, he's a representation of every student athlete besides football of what you can get if you come to UCLA, right? He, he played here, graduated here. He's a Hall of Fame inductee from here. He went to the NFL, so he went to the highest possible level you can in his particular sport, right? He's a father and a husband. So for me, I constantly brag on him because in terms of our recruiting, I want to make sure they know the guy that leads our particular program really is the blueprint for success if you choose UCLA. Was there some like offense defense competition today? Like it seemed like you guys were keeping score. You yeah. The scoreboard. So yeah, no, I, I always keep score. <laughs> I always keep score. Only like, because to, to me, um, you know, I'm going to be really blunt. We don't all get trophies. I want my guys to know that we won the day or we did not, period. Right, and if we did not, coaches as coaches, what do we need to correct so we can win the day? Also, I want their mindset coming in. When those guys are walking in this building at 610, it's a competition, not, oh, by the way, we would like to compete. So every single day, every single day, I'm always competing, but today specifically, uh, I wanted to make sure we won. You know, any type of, he put us in a, a red zone situation, I wanted to keep him out of the end zone. He put it out in the third down situation. I wanted to make sure we can put our hands up and signal fourth down and find the last for when we were calling it. I wanted those guys to understand whoever crossed that line, you represent everybody, so we needed to win. So there's like, just to follow up, but so ahead. there's like objective things that you look for. Absolutely. To like a point or like a win. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When we meet tomorrow as a defense, they have to understand 
one, this is the direction that I want this team to go on. Two, with the direction put it on you, did we win or not? And if we didn't, then myself as the coordinator, we need to fix that so we have the right mindset going forward. 21 not, to 14. 21 to 14. So you did, you won pretty handily today. 21 to 14. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, not that it wasn't competitive before, yeah. but is that something you've that there's been a growing emphasis on with this new staff with you at DC and everything? It's an emphasis for Coach Foster, right? So it's, that might be the difference from what Coach Kelly had. There's times that Coach Kelly just made a sudden change. Coach Foster's way is just he wants it all the time. Like he never wants to turn it off. And that might be what you guys see in terms of you guys to call it energy, whatever you want right. to call it. But it's the head man himself, you know, and you always get what you emphasize. And for him, he wants us to always have that competitive spirit. So now when we're talking about the pillars that he uses, the DRE, the discipline, respect, enthusiasm, that the actions actually represent that three pillars. Your huh? position coaching responsibilities have yeah. changed a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, so you're yeah. handling linebackers now? Yeah, I'm handling linebackers. So it's got it's kind of good because for me, I want – the defense to run through them. I want them to see it through my eyes. And they understand I give them tools and not assignments, right? So they have a, a philosophy that they go on the field so they can use different tools in terms of maybe I want the defensive lineman to go here so I can go there. And maybe I want to drop back because of what the quarterback's doing. So at least that way they can see it through my eyes. And then every once in a while I have to go back to the defensive line because they're, they're my kids. You know? so <laughs> I, you know, I don't want them getting mad at me either. How much uh, competitive juice does it add knowing, you know, Eric Bieniemy's on the other side, you know, screaming out his instructions and maybe kind of fire you guys up yeah. as a result? Well, Eric Bieniemy is pretty juice himself. <laughs> and that guy can get going. But for me, um, it, it's really an iron sharpens iron type of stuff. For me, he's actually helping our defense because we would see things that some offenses will never present until that week. Well, we see it every day. You know, so I'm so grateful for that, for having a person like me. Coach Bianami that can can teach me things. I mean, his office is right next to mine. So when we get upstairs, I'm always trying to ask for opinions on it, right? Like he's exposing our defense. You guys just don't see it. Sometimes we get to the quarterback fast enough, but there's a guy running clean down the field. So I got to clean it up and he can help me by saying, hey, when this guy's out of position, you're really taking advantage. So I'm actually using him to my advantage so I can beat him in practice. <laughs> Yeah. How, how important is the walk-on culture still? I mean, we saw the threes come out today yeah. and everybody got excited. Well, I have a, I have a, I have a, a heart for walk-ons because I was a walk-on at the University of Washington. So for us, you know, a, a person like that, and he represents the DRE, and when Coach gave him that scholarship, that made me, I, it filled me with pride more than just Kanye because it just showed, like, the hard work regardless of scholarship, walk on so our recruiting process we got to make sure we're bringing just as much walk on that are willing to compete and know in their mind they can be a starter no different than the scholarship hopefully we are right in our evaluation process and you guys all know sometimes we're wrong and with a guy like that it just encourages everybody else that has that walk on status with them right but i was a walk on so i, I felt for him because i know the gratification you get for all the hard work you put in and now you can be recognized in front of the team that was really really cool you know, it might still be early in spring practice, but are there any guys that are like jumping out to you, putting in a little extra effort? You know? Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the outside backers, only because they have the, the heaviest load on their back. Uh, they know the shoes they're trying to fill, uh, and they're taking it seriously. Would they look like the twins, Layatu, CJ? Not necessarily, but they can bring something else to the table so we kind of know what their characteristics represent and they're staying in that world, so that's good. You know, now with myself as a coordinator, I just got to find how to re reproduce the Twins and Latus and, and Carl Jones he's trying to get that pass rush going again. Devin moved to edge. Yeah. I mean, he was D-tackle yep. last year. What, what's he looked like? And I know he's kind of bounced around a little yeah. bit in his career. Yeah, so he will be a rotator in both positions, but for us in the Big Ten, you know, anytime I think of Big Ten, I think of smash mouth football and Devin fits that, that, that type of play. So we put him outside. You'll see Grant Bucky doing the same thing as well. He'll go inside and outside. But we just got to be able to be physical enough to compete with the, with the teams in that game. Got some turnover in the secondary, some new guys, yeah. Ryan Addison, Ramon Anderson. What have you thought of those, those guys coming in? I thought they're doing a great job. You know, you know KJ, uh, BA, as, as, as well as Ramon. So those guys have, they're doing, we call it do more. 
right? So as soon as they get off the field, they're up in a room and they're watching film. They're watching film together. They're watching film with coach because they understand that once I put them on uh, between the white lines, they have to control our defense. So they're learning in the process. The good thing that they got is corners that have some veteran experience so those guys can also help them. You know, they're trying to make a check. Like, hey, 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 no, this is the check. So they're learning as we're going, but I am really pleased with their progress through spring ball. Coach Len had some sayings like, you know, noxious communication, things like that. Uh, do you have anything uh, that you like to get, have these guys do or say? We do. We have, we have a mantra, but that, that'll be ours and ours only. Uh, we have a belief system, and uh, I hope when it's all said and done, when the season's done, I'll let you guys know what it is, but our <laughs> actions should represent that. But there is a culture that those guys are building uh, because of what we believe in. I think we truly believe in. And basically what they're learning is teamwork. We can lean on each other, right? We don't need seeing this respectfully. We're not going to rely on the Latus and the Twins to go get home. We're going to have to rely on everybody. We might need a corner to create a pick to help out the pass rush or to protect, uh, excuse me, to cover for seven, eight, nine seconds if we need to so we can help out the pass rush. But they kind of know that we're in a different world here, but this will be our new identity and we'll move forward. How many other coaches wear cleats for practice? I don't know. <laughs> this, uh, the only one? <laughs> I know you're going like to get me in there, trouble. So. My wife is actually going to see this here. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I'm too old probably to wear cleats, but this, this is probably the only platform I got to act like a kid again, you know? <laughs> so in the office, I'll play coach and out here, I try to be like the players, you know, those guys are running through the end zone and I'm trying my best. I'm dead last. I get it. <laughs> but I promise you, if one spring I beat it, you guys will hear about it because <laughs> I won't let that guy go. I mean, I promise you, I'll let them know that I beat him because I'm too old. But this is it. Like when, when we're all having fun, that includes me and myself. On Saturdays, I, I would like to be the biggest cheerleader possible because all the work we put is on the front end and then the players should be celebrating and I want to be a part of that. Before games, you kind of get yourself into a lather also, right? Because I'd see you coming out pretty early. You guys are paying attention to the well, wrong thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm out there. There's no one else yeah. out there. Well, uh, see, on, on game days, I say little. You know, throughout the week, I like to coach so they can understand what my mindset. But come Saturdays, this is really their time. And I will say almost absolutely nothing because the game plan is now in their hands. So for me, I try to get myself in my own mindset so I can think clearly enough. And the way to do it is to try to run out all my nerves so I can just give them the call. They understand it. it's not the caller in our defense. It's the guys that execute the call and then make the call work for them. There's so many tools that they can use and they change the calls on the field all the time. Based on what they see, they want to do this. And I say, go for it. You guys are the one winning the game. So we're kind of learning that. What do you remember about being a walk-on? I mean, yeah. the culture is different today than it was back then, I'm sure. But it seems kind of... Culture is very different from back in the day. In the back in the day, we actually had a, I was a, I'm a Don James guy, you know, so we actually had different locker rooms. Walk-ons were in a separate locker room than the scholarship players, and you had to earn your right to get there. And then once you get there, you had to earn your right to stay there. You know, so I, I remember that same day that they gave me a locker I actually cried. I really cried, and I, I forgot to call my mom. Uh, and somebody else called my mom to congratulate. So she was really, really pissed. So I got scolded for that. Then you but cried again. Then I cried again. <laughs> yeah, right. I was glad she wasn't in Seattle at the time. But no, that I cherished those moments. And I've always held that uh, deep inside of me. You know, so when we look for walk-ons, we don't look for bodies. We look for guys that are willing to compete and the guys that have the edge on their shoulder. And the guy that got a word the scholarship, I promise you, he probably had the biggest edge on his shoulder. And that's the thing. His mindset will never change. Scholarship or not, I promise you, he will continue to have that edge because now he's going to have to prove why he is that and then try to climb the depth chart from there. Were you there when Coach Moore was there? No, he came after me. Okay. Yeah, he came after me. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much.